human life, when you think about it, is pretty miserable. Think of how few people actually get what they want out of life, and yet how much they're driven by their desires. And sometimes their inability to get what they want can be blamed to laziness, but a lot of times it's just factors totally outside of their control. A wave comes up out of the ocean, washes people away, and all their plans, all their hopes, all their, all their desires get washed away as well. And what we're left with is thousands of corpses, wrecked buildings. That's just one day's events. And so what we need is a way of dealing with frustrated desire. And that's one of the things the Buddha offers us. He talks about the emotions that come from desire, and there's, there's grief, and there's joy, and there's equanimity. And he divides them into two types. There's householder grief, householder joy, householder equanimity, and renunciate grief, renunciate joy, and renunciate equanimity. And he uses these different emotions as one of the ways of mapping out the path. Most of us live in householder grief, householder joy, householder equanimity. In other words, householder grief is the type that comes when you don't get the sights and sounds and smells and tastes and tactile sensations you want, or you don't get the ideas you want. Householder joy is when you finally do get what you want in terms of sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations and ideas. And householder equanimity is when you simply keep yourself equanimous in the midst of these things, whether they're good or bad. And most of us muck around in these three types of emotions. We suffer grief, and so we look for joy in terms of sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, and ideas. And when we don't get what we want, okay, there's more grief, and so we look again in the same place. And what the Buddha wants us to do is to turn our attention to what he calls renunciate grief, renunciate joy, renunciate equanimity. Renunciate grief is when you reflect on how you haven't attained what you want in terms of freeing the mind from suffering. You haven't reached the goal of the path. Renunciate joy is when you have reached the path, and then renunciate equanimity is the equanimity that comes when you know the path is completed. And one of the interesting things the Buddha points out is that when we suffer from household or grief, the way to get ourselves above and beyond that is to try to transform it into renunciate grief. Because householder grief doesn't leave much hope. Renunciate grief at least leaves us, leaves us with some hope. One of the ways of doing this is how he has us reflect on the limitations of human life. That chant we had just now, I'm subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, subject to separation from all that we love, and the reflection on karma. In the full text of the Sutra, the Buddha doesn't stop there with just reflecting on the fact that you are subject to these things. He says all people, all beings, man, woman, child, ordained or not, whatever level of being you're on, all beings are subject to these things. This is one of the ways the Buddha treats all grief and dissatisfaction. He says, open your eyes. Are you the only person who suffer in these things? Because so many times it's the question is, why me? 
And the answer is because it happens to everybody. There's no exception. And it's amazing what open yourself, opening yourself up like this will do for you. Changes the whole perspective. You start seeing the futility of running around in sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, and ideas looking for your happiness. In other words, basically what the Buddha wants you to do is transform your grief into sangwega. That overwhelming sense of dismay, not at your own personal problems, but at just the nature of human existence. Because that points you to the way out. Of course, Sangwega on its own is not a very comfortable emotion to have, but at least it leads us to a basada, or provides the opening but it's to a basada, the sense of confidence that there must be a way out. And then the way to work on renunciate grief is not to go looking for sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. It's focusing your efforts on following the path. In other words, this kind of grief has its uses. It's a useful grief. So many times you hear people saying, well, don't try to push too hard in the practice. Don't have any sense of goal because you get frustrated over the fact that you haven't reached your goal. That closes off all the doors. You want What you want is the attitude, I'm not where I want to be, but there is a way to get where I want to be. And you have the right sense of direction. It's not going back to householder joy. It's looking for a renunciate joy. So whenever you find yourself asking, why me? The answer is always, well, why not you? It happens to everybody. What are you going to do about it? You can't just stew around in your own personal problems. You can deal with them, but you have to deal with them in such a way that opens you up to the larger picture. And to get something out of the grief, get something out of the disappointment. This is why John Lee has his teachings on what, what are called the worldly dharmas. Gain, loss, status, loss of status. Praise, criticism, pleasure, and pain. He says all eight of them have their uses. We don't like the negative ones, but they have their uses for developing a sense of direction. Okay, when loss hits you, if you can realize, oh, this is what happens to the human human beings everywhere. Then take it as a lesson so you don't get carried away by gain when it comes back. The same with loss of status. Oh, this is what happens to people when they lose status. After all, whose was it? Status is something the world gives you. The world gives it, the world can take away. And instead of taking it personally, you use the, the gains, you use the status that's, that you find for whatever purposes you find are skillful. And when there's loss of these things, you can learn lessons, you can use those events. So they have a useful purpose as well. So you can reflect on the nature of the human condition and not get carried away by the good things when they come back again. So this is how the Buddha has you deal with disappointment. He says, don't start trying to assuage it by looking for pleasure in worldly things. He said, that's why most people get involved in sensuality. They don't see any other escape from pain, disappointment, grief, aside from scrambling after worldly things. He says, set your sights in a different direction. Renunciate grief, even though it is still a kind of grief, it's better than getting lost. Because it can lead to renunciate joy, the kind of joy that isn't affected when things change outside. 
and we're working on it right now, the, the sense of ease, the sense of well-being that comes from having the mind in concentration. That's part of the path towards renunciate joy. You don't have to wait till the very end of the path to gain some of this joy. It comes, a sense of well-being that comes as, when you concentrate the mind. To remind yourself there are alternatives to running after sensual pleasures. There's the pleasure of a well-centered mind, a mind that's not affected by things, that it has its own internal sense of well-being. It doesn't need to depend on anything else outside. So when you find yourself wallowing in grief, remember the Buddha's instructions on where to take that grief, what to do with it, how to find a way out. So you don't stay stuck in that vicious cycle of going from grief to joy to grief to joy to grief to grief to grief to grief. Based on the ups and downs and of things you sense through the senses. Take that grief and point it in another direction. My English teacher, senior in high school, once made a remark. It's the sign of a great person that reflects on his or her own personal problems, but from that can generalize, universalize them to the human condition. She was talking about great poets, but it's also the nature of any wise mind. Not to wallow in your old, in your own personal issues, but to generalize from them, to see, okay, this is the way it is for human beings everywhere. You're not the first person to suffer in this way, and you're not going to be the last. But if you don't set your sights in it in this the direction of renunciate grief and joy and equanimity, you'll never find a way out. But if you learn to see the whole human condition, that's the beginning of it, of the road to freedom. So broaden your gaze. Don't just look inside, look around yourself as well. 